Now, um, let's go into the comment for the comment for the first episode. And I couldn't see all the replays. I couldn't. I, I just it didn't save. But while I was watching, while doing the episode one, I saw a comment. And the person's, what was his name? Like the, the, the YouTube name. It was something like, all right, she's looking it up right now. What was the name? Yeah, it was, it, it was a very interesting question. The, the question was, um, I was talking about how the spirit lives forever and the body dies. The body's just temporary. And he, he, he made a comment. I, I don't know if it's he or she, but the comment was, uh, they believed that Adam and Eve were originally made to live forever, right? But only because they committed the fall, after they committed the fall, this is why they, uh, this is why humans became mortal. What was it? What was, what's the name? Saved and, rejoicing. saved and rejoicing. So saved and rejoicing. Thank you so much for that, uh, that comment. I know it's not actually a question, but it's an interesting topic. The interesting topic is were human beings made to live forever, but because of the fall, all of a sudden they are no longer living forever and they're mortal. Right, because one of the verses I did bring up from last week, uh, it was Ecclesiastes chapter twelve, verse seven. Last week, um, it's the verse says that the body dies and the spirit goes back to God who gave it. Right, and the response to that comment was to, to what I said was, "Oh, I think Adam and Eve were all we human beings were made by God to live forever, but because of the fall, this is why we became mortal and God had to change it." Right, so. You know, when I look at that comment, I'm like, oh, that's an interesting thing to th think about, right? And the, uh, this, is, this is the assumption. The, the, the assumption is that God originally created the earth and created the bodies and everything physical to be forever. Nothing was supposed to die, like nothing, okay? So there's a couple things that we do have to think about, okay? There's a couple things we do have to think about. If human beings were made to live forever and ever and ever, there are going to be some issues and problems that we have, right? So when we look at all of creation, right, and human beings, that means that from the time of Adam, which was roughly 6,000 years ago, it means that imagine if no one ever died and everyone lived forever, what would be the problem? Well, of course, we're going to look at a population problem, right? And we can't say that... Because, uh, you know, because of the fall, we started to reproduce. That doesn't make sense because God told human beings to multiply on the sixth day of creation, Genesis chapter one, right? So even before the fall, we were told to multiply. So there's a big problem there, right? So even though that's a problem, I think we got to get into a little bit more of the spiritual, the spiritual meat of this. And the first verse I want to show you is Genesis chapter two, verse seven, right? And this is when it's... it's Genesis, Genesis chapter 2 verse 7 says that the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and the man became a living being, right? That's Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. So the thing that you have to understand here is why is this a verse that kind of shows otherwise that Adam and Eve were not supposed to live forever or human beings were never supposed to live forever, right? Because when you look at Genesis 2 7, when it says that God put the breath of life into man, the word used in Hebrew is ruach, okay? R-U-A-C-H, ruach, right? And it means breath, it means wind, but it also means spirit. So how do I know? But there's another, oh, there's also another word for breath. So why would God specifically use ruach in this instance in Genesis 2-7? And one way you can understand that it does talk about the spirit is if you also look at the Hebrew word for the Holy Spirit, is once again the same word, Ruach HaKadosh. That is the Holy Spirit, right? So this, the word spirit, Ruach, is also used for the Holy Spirit, which means that even before the fall actually happened, God breathed the Spirit into human beings, right? So the Spirit was already there even before Adam and Eve committed the fall. Which means that 
if Adam and Eve were to commit the fall, then all of a sudden we, um, all of a sudden they become mortal, then what would be the point of the spirit in the first place? Why would God create the spirit if we are supposed to live forever in the body, right? There'd be no purpose for the spirit whatsoever, right? So another way, another thing, another view I want you to take a look at as an open discussion right now is when you look at, when people say that uh, human beings are supposed to live forever in their physical bodies, but after the fall, they, you know, they became mortal. One of the things we do have to look at is in the story of the fall, what actually died, okay? Because remember, we have a body and a spirit. Ruach, the spirit was breathed into man, and we have the body that was created too from the rib of a woman, right? So here we have these two things is, well, in the story of the fall, what actually died? Because this makes a big, this is really important because if it's the body that died, then that means what? It means that, oh, okay, that means that we used to live forever and then now we're dying. On the flip side, if it's the spirit that died, what happens is we know that it's no longer a physical thing, it's a spiritual thing. And that's why I'm going to quickly go over something to figure out, did, uh, did what died at the time of Adam and Eve in the fall? Right, so let's first start off with Genesis chapter 2, verse 17. Very, very famous verse. Basically, God says, do not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat of it, you will certainly die. And if you go into like the KJV translation, on the day you eat of it, you will surely die. On the day you eat of it, okay? So here we have the situation where God says, you eat it, you die. So we see death comes into the picture. Now, Genesis chapter 3, verse 4 is interesting because this is Satan's take on it. So Satan comes to Adam and Eve, and what does Satan say? He says, ah, you're not going to die. So here we have the angel on one shoulder and the devil on the other, and the angel's like, don't eat it, you're going to die. And then the, Satan, you know, the, the, the devil on the other side is like, you better eat it because you're not going to die. Right, so you have... You know, the angel and the devil, and they're like, no, you're going to die. You're not going to die. You're going to die, right? What happens? Well, they ate the fruit. All right? So now that we know that they ate the fruit, we know that death is imminent. Now, is it possible that it is physical death? Absolutely. But it's also possible it could be spiritual death. So how can we figure this out a lot better? Let's turn to Revelation chapter 20, verse 14. Okay? And Revelation 20, verse 14 is actually one of my favorite verses. It says, Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire, which is obviously hell. Lake of fire is hell, right? The lake of fire is the second death. And this is where the concept of two different types of death comes into the Bible. There's not just a first death. There's two ways you can die, which kind of sucks, right? <laughs> like, oh no, I don't want to die twice, right? So the first death, which one is that one? I'm not sure. Right? Well, obviously we know that the first death is what? The first death is the physical death. And how do we know that? Look at Ecclesiastes 12, 7. We looked at that from last week. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 7 says that the dust returns, you know, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Your body actually turns back into uh, dust, right? When it decomposes, right? So your body goes back and you are destined to die right? Man is destined, like, there's another verse you can look at later. It's Hebrews 9, 27. It says man is destined to die and then face judgment, right? So we're destined to die the first death. But the most important thing about Revelation chapter 20, verse 14, is that it says this, the lake of fire is the second death. The lake of fire, which means hell. The second death leads to hell, which means which one is more important? The physical death, which everyone's going to die anyways, or the spiritual death that actually leads to hell. Well, when we look at this, we can understand it's the spiritual death is much more important than the physical death. We're all going to die anyways. When God said to Adam and Eve, hey, if you, eat, if you disobey this command I give you, you will surely die. What was he really saying? And what, how, and understanding this is so important because it changes the way that you think about your faith and how you look at God. What does it mean you're going to die? Does it really mean you're going to physically die? Well, they didn't. Well, Adam like lived to like 900 something years old, but did they physically die? And the answer is eventually. But is that important? 
Is that physical death the most important thing? And the answer is I'd say no, because the second death leads you to hell. So the question is what leads you to hell? And it's obviously, it has to do with our relationship with God. It's, it's all about our relationship. Does it matter how healthy your body is when it comes to your life and death, what eternal life and eternal death? Is God going to say, you didn't exercise, can't come to heaven. You don't look good enough, you can't come to heaven. No, God is going to sit there and the number one thing he's going to ask is, what is your faith, right? Do you believe, do you have a relationship with me? The relationship is the most important thing between man and God. Like, think about this. What does it mean to die in relationship? Like, I'm going to tell you guys, spiritual death means the death of a relationship, the cutting of a relationship between you and God, which leads to hell. So let me, let me tell you, let me give you an example. Imagine you're going to, like recently, you know, right now there's the Eras Tour with Taylor Swift. Everyone's going to these concerts, right? Imagine you and your friends say, hey, I got tickets for you. Here's the tickets. We'll meet you here. But how many people go to a Taylor Swift concert? You're talking tens of thousands. Now, all these people, right? All these people, they're alive and they're walking past you. Are they alive to you in relationship? And the answer is absolutely not. Which means that if these tens of thousands of people pass by and they don't say hi to you, do you care? And the answer is absolutely not. You don't care if they say hi or not. Why? Because there's no relationship between the two of you. So you see all these thousands of people and then you see your friend at the back. You're like, oh, there's my friend. And when you see them, your eyes light up. You're like, hey, hey, over here. Even though there's so many living people around you, what matters even to us is the relationship. If a stranger passes by and doesn't say hi, it doesn't matter. But imagine the person you love walks by, don't even look at you, doesn't even say hi, and just walks past you. How would you feel? That's the power of relationship. The power of relationship is once you have that connection in your heart and you have that relationship, you're alive no matter where you are. You're alive no matter if you see each other or not. And what we know for certain, what God says is, hey, guess what? If you believe in Jesus, you will live even though you die. What does that mean? Even though we all die physically, we can still live forever if we have that spiritual relationship with God. When I look at the story of Adam and Eve, is the story about physical death or is it really about spiritual death, the one that leads to hell? What is more important to God? And the most important thing is, do you have that connection? And are you, do you have that relationship with God, which becomes the most important thing, right? When I look at God and God in his wisdom, God who knows what's possible that people can obey or disobey, He's not going to just make, in my opinion, he's not going to just make human beings to be mortal and then all of a sudden, oh, they made a mistake. Oh, no, well, I'm going to have to change everything around now. No, you, you'll see that the rules and the laws of this world have always been the same. They've never changed, right? This is why science is able to pick up things from thousands of years ago because the way science works and the way uh, creation is and nature is, it's remained the same, right? So... I would say this, is, this would be my argument for you guys. Is like, yeah, were we made to live forever? And I'm going to be like, nah, I don't think so. I, I don't believe so. The most important thing is our spiritual relationship, our spiritual life, right? Us being connected to God. And when Adam and Eve committed the fall and disobeyed, that disobedience was not a physical thing, right? Disobedience begins from here. It's a faith thing. It's a love thing. Because... If I love my wife, I'll listen to her. That's just the way it is. A physical thing that I do of obeying my wife is just an expression of what's truly in my heart. All God was saying, if you love me, just listen to this one thing I don't want you to do, right? This is the thing that breaks my heart. It's the same thing between a husband and wife. If 
They're going to be, there's going to be lies. There's going to be fighting. There's going to be some you know, doubts or whatever going to be happening inside the marriage. There's going to be some, some bad things that happen. But the moment you break the love and you cheat on your husband or wife, it, that's the most heartbreaking thing. That you, It's almost impossible to come back together. So when I look at this too, we really need to look at, was the story of Adam and Eve really about physical death and living forever physically, or was it more spiritual? And when we look all throughout the scriptures, everything is more spiritual than physical. The last thing, verse I give to you is John chapter 6, verse 63, and Jesus says himself, the spirit gives life, the flesh counts for nothing. The words I've spoken to you, they are full of the spirit in life. He spoke words of the words of God, words of faith that change the inside and not the outside. So that would be something uh, saved and rejoicing. Great discussion. Oh, it's not really discussion because we're not going back and forth. But that's what I would be talking about when it comes to, oh, we're human beings really made to live forever. Okay.